Hello, this is Julia and Maria of Pretty Purposeful, and today we're with Georgia Cohane, author of Social Entrepreneurship for the 21st Century, and we'll be asking her a few questions about her book and her purpose, and she is very impressive. She's a fellow of the Roosevelt Institute, has a Harvard MBA, and teaches at Columbia University. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. So our first question we have is kind of what advice you would give to nonprofits based off your book about how they can use different models from the private sector and apply that to uh, nonprofits and charities. So, first of all, thank you. Thank you for coming. Welcome to New York. Oh, yes. uh, welcome Thanks. to the Roosevelt Institute. Uh, it's terrific to have you here. Um, uh, and I'm glad you found my book. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, and and um, I wrote a book about social entrepreneurship, um, which is a little bit hard to define. Uh, yes. but, uh, but part of what I try to do is show that social change and the way people think about change and work on social change, in fact, in the way that you girls are. Um, happens often in the nonprofit sector, but can also yes. happen um, through businesses, and it can also happen through government. And to me, the most interesting way it happens is through partnerships. So hmm. if, if you're sort of asking for one piece of advice, I think, um, for nonprofits and nonprofit leaders, which um, you two both are, it's to really seek out partners in other places. So that might be you know, the kind of trip that you're doing to New York for today and finding allies. That might yeah. be finding partners. That might be finding businesses that support your work. It certainly yes. sounds like you're already on your way to doing good work in Africa and working with governments there. So I guess Thank my you. sort of yes. top line <laughs> piece of advice is that none of this work in social entrepreneurship happens alone. It's not the work exactly. of any yes. one or two um, individuals. It's not the work of any one organization. It's lots of collaboration. I definitely agree. Impact by working with other people. Yes. So I know you wrote this a book recently. So what's your advice for kind of getting your goals accomplished, such as writing a book and really getting uh, finishing those goals? So uh, I've written now one book, <laughs> okay, um, which was a terrific experience. I'm very happy to write it. I've also yes. learned a huge amount. Should I ever write a second book? Um, I've always been interested in social change and how we really think about um, uh, not just sort of the abundance and lots of opportunities mm -hmm. around us, but for, for individuals, for people who, who don't have those opportunities. And oh, then, definitely, yes. um, So I've been thinking for a long time throughout my career how you best address some of those discrepancies and how you use um, your own education or your own skills um, or your own experiences to bear on other people who haven't necessarily had those opportunities and those skills and those experiences. And writing a book is sort of one way to do that. Um, yes. I had, um, I'm not... Uh, I haven't written a lot of books, I've written one, um, <laughs> but I've sort of tried to get at some of those issues of, of poverty, of inequality in different mm -hmm. ways through teaching, um, through advocacy work, which is the kind of thing we do at a think tank. Uh, and I had lots of ideas bubbling around in my head for, mm -hmm. for several years, and a publisher approached me and said, do you want to write a book? Um, uh, I love to write. It took me um, about two, a year to two years all okay. in. Um, and, and even though that wasn't a huge amount of time, it was, it was work that I had been working on throughout my career uh, in the private yeah. sector um, and, uh, and in the um, nonprofit sector. Okay. Um, so I, th what I've learned is that, I, my, that my first piece of advice to you, which is find a lot of partners and allies, I didn't do as mm -hmm. much of a good job of in writing the book, and I okay. should have <laughs> let other people comment on more of it, and I should have enlisted editors formally and more informally. But, yeah. um, but there it is. Yes, <laughs> Thank you for all yeah. the powerful work that you're doing to help inspire people. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you got to your current position. Uh, right, in, in, in 20 words or, or, or less, for sure. <laughs> um, I, I grew up in New York City. Um, okay. I grew up in the Upper West Side, um, and I had uh, really was very lucky for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I think New York is a terrific place, and two, oh, yes. I had um, very supportive parents uh, who both personally and professionally have sort of long been very involved civically um, yes. and have been themselves sort of advocates and champions of social change in various ways through their careers and also um, a lot of their personal convictions and commitments. Um, and three, I, I was very lucky and went to a terrific school here in New York and that afforded me the chance to um, have some great educational opportunities after that. Um, I would say the reason I give that background prior to sort of my professional life afterwards is I think all of those really informed how I, how I thought about the world. Mm -hmm. So one thing about growing up in a place like New York City, um, for all its sort of magnificence, is that you're also yes. really um, in close proximity to a lot of people who sort of who don't have um, access mm -hmm. to a lot of the opportunities you do. And so um, I think between the clear opportunity to go to great school and having parents who sort of reminded me that a lot of what I saw around me really represented the real world and not necessarily 
Um, yeah. not, not everyone necessarily had the chances yes. that I did. It was instilled in me very early on um, that uh, however I chose to pursue that, that it was sort of up to me um, to try to really um, cross some of those bridges um, and, and create opportunities for other people. That's great. Um, yes. So you have used my education. You know, I, a lot. Some people have a very linear career, and mm -hmm. you know, and they, they start life as a journalist, and they and they they stick at that, or they start life as a scientist, or they start life as a teacher, and they stay in that one path. And I've worked at think tanks, and I've um, yes. taught in academia, and um, and I've worked for McKinsey, a consulting firm, um, uh, and I worked as a consultant, I've worked at a philanthropy, so I've done a number of pieces. They've all tried Diverse. to address issues of poverty and yes. inequality in yes. different ways, but I've sort of taken a different lens and a different tack. So there's kind of okay. a common theme, but a lot of different there's ways to There's a common theme, and, right, and, yeah. I, and I'd like to think of it as rounding out skills. There's some, yeah. people, some people, um, and again, as a, you, know, for, you asked for advice, I actually think having um, uh, a, a constellation of experiences that all sort of do have a common theme, but yes. but uh, sort of bring you different sets of skills. At least has served me, um, has served me well and nicely. But I think some people also take a more linear approach. Yes. And <laughs> yeah, now you currently work at the Roosevelt Institute. Mm -hmm. So what kind of uh, goals are you accomplishing with that partnership? So Roosevelt is, a, is an interesting place. It's a think tank, and a lot of people sort of outside, sometimes people wonder, you know, what, what is a think tank? And you just sit around thinking all day, you know, what, yeah. what exactly do you do? And, and think tanks come in different stripes. Um, the okay. Roosevelt Institute is a terrific place. It, um, it has a number of pieces, broadly speaking, um, it's an institution, it's a nonprofit, not, mm -hmm. not unlike yours, that sort of honors the legacy of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt yes. and what that means specifically in the work that I do um, in the think tank portion of it, there are other pieces of the Roosevelt work, um, is that we think about, broadly speaking, social and economic mm -hmm. policy in the 21st century in contemporary terms, but in ways that tend to reflect the spirit and the legacy of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt, all of um, who worked on deeply on issues of sort of economic yeah. and social rights and human rights. So, uh, so we no so a lot of so we do different things and we, we um, and, and most think tanks too but some of us write books some of us write articles um, we host events yes. um, but it's really very much uh, and try to influence public policy both in the short term and, and in the long term uh, and I try to merge some of that with my teaching as well because to me it's very exciting to think about um, how, how younger be sort of a next yeah. generation and I'm even teaching students older than you are but um, <laughs> okay. sort of to go out and think of and, and think about the world and think about mm -hmm. again whatever careers and whatever sectors they decide to work in that they can actually um, really have positive influence and change yeah. in the world. So what are some of your visions and future plans at this point? What are you looking forward to doing? <laughs> well, is there another book uh, in the future? There, there, there may be another book. Um, I'm not sure. It, okay. It's not imminent. Um, <laughs> yeah. What I'm hoping to do, what I, what I, uh, I won't get too technical, but I, I'm continuing research in certain pieces of the book. So I think okay. um, I talk. I, I mentioned sort of cross sector partnerships. I specifically, um, I'm starting to work more on what I might call sort of innovative finance and ways that you can use philanthropy and, and commercial capital or sort of yes. the capital markets and perhaps some interesting new public policy approaches to bring all of those to be, together to bear on things like infrastructure investment or things like affordable housing or even alternative um, energy in ways that you can, interesting. as yeah. you say, fundraise but start to tap into different sources of funding. Um, whether that's another book, whether that's more white papers, whether that's actually, you know, I, I would love someday to actually uh, work in government myself. I yes, think a, yeah. lot of, a lot of people of entrepreneurial energy um, don't necessarily go into the public sector. People get excited about nonprofit work and people get excited um, about, you know, startup companies, but they yes. don't necessarily think that government can be an innovative place. Uh, and that might be because government is always an innovative place, yes. but if you really think about reach and scale, um, if you really think about reach and scale, um, to me, the idea of, of actually serving in government is exciting. Yeah, I mean, that's just um, what we need in our government is uh, innovation. Division, and, yeah. yeah. So what advice would you give to other teenagers who want to follow in a similar path, or not other teenagers, but other teenagers like <laughs> us, <laughs> Thank who you. want to follow <laughs> in a similar path, or who want to be able to support you or get involved in yeah. your cause? Well, I would, you know, I, I sort of turn it back, actually, and reflect a little bit on, on what the two of you are doing. I have to say, oh, I you. think it's really, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, I mean, I have children, I have daughters who are, who are younger than both of you, but I told you I showed them your website, you know, who often they, they talk about issues in school and they walk around the city mm -hmm. and they, they know, you know, whether it's, mm -hmm. whether it's climate change or homelessness, they're, they're issues that they 
want to address. And I think that they sometimes think, you know, well, we're young and, mm -hmm. you know, that are we, are we limited in what we can do? And I think the, the, the fact that you all have jumped in in such an enthusiastic and really, you know, professional and exciting way and said this is a Thank cause you. we care about and we're going to figure it out um, is extraordinary. And so I think that just um, not being shy about uh, about putting together an effort, yes. you know, and, and, and sort of having the idealism, but also the practicality to say we're going to make this work is extraordinary. I, I also just am reminded in seeing your website and the fact that you all found me that, you know, very different than when I was a kid, that the te technology allows you in terms of reach and getting your message oh, yes. across and enlisting yeah. um, allies and friends, that it, it, it's, it's really an extraordinary way to, you know, technology, te excuse me, technology is just a tool. It's sort of not mm -hmm. an end in itself, but you all have really used it in a um, very purposeful um, and very meaningful way that I <laughs> think is, is, is terrific. I also think, you know, if you have the chance, it sounds like you will, to actually go um, and visit some of the places and meet with some of the people that you're talking about, that having the, the human um, connection will be very instructive to, oh, you, yes. to, to you and help you tell the story through their perspective, the, the, women's, the perspective of the women and the girls that you're meeting with. Um, it, it's just, it's terrific. So I think, you know, not necessarily uh, you know, I may have written a book, but there isn't a rule book. I mean, that's, I think that's sort of the exciting part and, and yes. to really, to, to really um, motivate your peers and get them involved, just by example, and say, you know, that what you're doing, regardless of sort of, you know, what the, how, how many surgeries you fund or how, mm -hmm. you know, what, you can measure some of that impact, but I think um, this kind of work has a much larger impact that's a little bit harder to measure, but you know, equally as important. Yeah, so kind of finding a purpose they care about and then finding creative ways to connect with other people or through technology to advance yes. that. Well, thank you so much for meeting with yes. us today. It's been <laughs> great to talk to you. That's terrific. And you can find out more about Pretty Purposeful at our website, prettypurposeful.org, and make sure to read George's book, Social Entrepreneurship <laughs> for the 21st Century. And thank you again. For oh, thank with you. Us. It's yes. terrific. Thank you. Yeah.